All right, friends, this video is for you. For those of you that I've spent countless hours in the comments section, over on Twitter, hanging out, talking about whether you should make that M1 Mac investment, or did you make a good investment because maybe you've already purchased it, I wanna help you unpack that even further, especially with the recent rumors that have just been presented. So let's get into it. What is going on, you beautiful humans? Welcome back to the channel. And yes, today I wanna to do a little bit of a fireside chat because you know what? I'm rocking the M1 and not doing Intel all that much. So it's getting a little chilly in here. So that being said, what I actually wanted to do is to be able to help unpack and further talk about and help with the justification of investing in the M1 Mac, whether you've already purchased one or whether you really are on the cusp and if you've been living under a rock or really just sort of preoccupied with what's happening in the world or your own backyard and you're not aware of these recent rumors, uh, especially the, the Mark Gurman uh, Bloomberg article, I'll link that up below, but really kind of talking about what's on the horizon. We're now in 2021 and is the M1 still a viable option? Now, let me first say that if you have purchased the M1, regardless of which one you purchased, you have a great machine, congratulations. And of course, for those of you that have a Windows PC or a Linux machine and it's serving you your needs, getting things done that you need to get done, congratulations. Now, of course, I just wanna reiterate based on the last video that I did that the M1 is the baseline. This is the slowest chip that Apple is going to make from here on out. You've seen the test, you've seen what I've done on this channel, and if you haven't, you will you should certainly check it out because I've put these machines through the test. They are fantastic, they are very capable, so just keep that in mind. Now I'm gonna do you a solid. I, I'm gonna put this at the beginning of the video to help you, and then you can just exit if you need to. I'm gonna say to you right now that if you are creating, you're designing, you're building, your time, your, like your time, mean something to you, like giving that back to you, and you need the machine now, then make that investment. Simple enough, that, that's all there is to it. All right, so off the soapbox here and getting into what we know about the M1 chips and that we have an eight core CPU and an eight core GPU. And again, I have pushed these things to the limits and they have done quite well. And like I said, you've probably seen it. And if you haven't, check them out. So that being said, with the rumors that are out now with some of the redesigns, but really let's talk about the chips, the M1, whatever it's gonna be, X, or the M2, they're talking about 16 core CPUs and GPUs, and maybe even doubling that to 32, which sounds really ridiculous. But let's actually talk about the, the MacBooks for a second. And so with that next iteration, and even if we're talking about doubling the cores, there will be the law of diminishing returns at some point, but again, as the applications continue to get developed, as AI becomes uh, more like sort of front and center and machine learning, a lot of, a lot of this efficiency and, and these chipsets will be utilized. So there, there is that. So we are thinking about the future. But for those of you, again, that have purchased the M1, you've got a great tool. Now, looking at the MacBook Pro, which is, which is rumored, um, that has been rumored for a while, the 14 inch, I do think that that is definitely coming. And I think it, as far as the MacBooks being updated, we are looking at the second half of 2021 and maybe even uh, late uh, Q3 and touching into Q4. So that's just something to think about. So with the 14 inch, I do think that that's gonna sit at the end of like sort of the higher end of the 13 inch. I don't think that that's going away, but I do think that that's going to be considered sort of a higher, uh, like higher tiered option. And of course I'll talk about pricing uh, toward the end and, and what my thoughts are on that. Same thing with the 16 inch. I, I do think that that is coming. I think the upgrade is there. And so let's actually talk about that a little minute in a little bit and, and like the rumors and what we're hearing now. As far as the touch bar, let's actually talk about that. Now, I've never really been a fan of the touch bar, but you know what I am a fan of? I'm a fan of muscle memory. And for those of you that have gotten used to the touch bar, that you use it in your day to day, if they do remove that, I am, I am upset for you. I do feel for you. Now, whether I like it or not, but I do like the routine and the muscle memory, and so I'm with you on this one. However, there's a possibility that that does go away based on some of those rumors. 
Now, does that mean that that's the gateway uh, to see if this is going to be a touchscreen? I don't think so this year. And Apple has stated over and over again that they're not doing the touchscreen. I've never really found myself trying to touch the screen anyway, uh, even though I use an iPad as my daily driver. But what I will tell you is that it could potentially be uh, that entry point into a touchscreen. However, there's a couple of other things to think about. As far as uh, the issues that they might have had with the touch bar, uh, being able to you know, bring those in, to work on those machines, maybe even having to scrap the entire machine just to be able to fix the touch bar, even if you have Apple Care or not, maybe that's become an issue for them. And also too, thinking about the, the power consumption and the efficiency, you know Apple's gonna try to go thinner and lighter on these machines. So if the touch bar, the removal of that actually allows them to do some other things, that's certainly something that they're gonna be thinking about. And as far as the screen is concerned, touchscreen or not, mini LED looks like it's going to be in the future because you're going to have uh, that higher contrast, those, those deeper blacks, and of course the, the power hunger of the, the other um, screens that have, have been available and even OLED, this mini LED is, is moving in that direction of, of longevity as well. So it, as far as, as the burn-in and as far as uh, the life of the LED, these mini LEDs, it seems that this is actually going to give these MacBooks a, a, a bit more life when it comes to the screen. They're gonna be brighter. And so as a creative, I'm certainly excited about that. And I'm sure even just for the average user, you're probably excited about that. Now, since we're on the power consumption piece, let's actually talk about a rumored uh, reintroduction to MagSafe. I love MagSafe. And if you are in a busy household or an office and you've got your MacBook plugged in and somebody like walks by and trips over it and that thing just magnetically, it just detaches, I really do miss that. However, if you're going to add more IO, so more Thunderbolt ports to the chassis and then also MagSafe, but what happens to those of us that are also charging via our monitors uh, with the USB-C Thunderbolt 3 uh, cables that we're using? And so I think some people would be pretty upset if you lose that ability. I mean, wouldn't you? And of course, there's additional rumors of some IO such as Maybe they'll add HDMI and maybe they'll add some additional ports. And of course, when it comes to the SD card slot, I know Apple was probably thinking like, you know what, camera manufacturers are going to uh, come to us and basically say like, yep, we're gonna get rid of the SD cards and you're gonna be uh, attaching your camera directly uh, to your MacBook Pro or your, your Mac computer via USB-C Thunderbolt and that's how you're going to get all of your media. And I know there are some people that do that, but really when it comes to uh, being a, a filmmaker and photography, I'm pulling that SD card out, putting it into uh, the hub. That's just the way that we do it. Maybe that's muscle memory. That's just how we do it. Now, looking at the chassis though, and the Apple aesthetic, and of course them wanting to make things thinner, slimmer bezels, however they want to do it and adding in all of that IO as far as the aesthetics concern, I don't know. I mean, that'll be interesting to see, but the SD card slot for sure, I would love, and many of us would really love to have that back. And then pivoting back over when I was talking about connecting with SD cards, like using a hub, what does that mean for the hubs, the dongles, the docks that we've all uh, got accustomed to using. Now, from an environmental standpoint, I really do like the fact that we wouldn't have to buy something additional. However, I don't think we're gonna be able to get away from it completely because some of these hubs have allowed us to do some pretty incredible things, especially some of the powered hubs. So that'll be interesting to see if Apple is really trying to help us move away from that. So, I mean, that's still a lot. That's, that's really just up in the air. And of course, talking about some additional improvements, with Apple's architecture and everything being under the, the same roof and ba basically the same hood, being able to make improvements on Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 6E, and actually being able to make these incremental uh, adjustments because they're not having to deal with a third party manufacturer to, to test this and to work through this and to provide updates to. And that's another thing too, when it comes to the M1 chip, I really do think Apple is going to try to support this for as, a long, for as long as it possibly can, because again, it's their architecture. So it makes it a little bit easier to be able to support that with the iterations of you know, the next uh, operating systems and of course the apps. 
So just, again, something to think about if you have the M1, I don't think it's gonna get dumped within the next year. And of course, for those of you that have reached out about the IMAX, the Intel IMAX, and whether you should wait or go ahead and pull that trigger now, it seems like the 24 inch uh, IMAX are gonna come out. But again, I think later this year, much later this year, uh, and of course, it's gonna be edge to edge. And of course, it's it's gonna have a different look to it. So that's gonna be the question that I'm gonna to pose to you. That's something that I'm asking you and certainly weigh in on this. How would you feel? And of course, I've said this in the comments, how would you feel if you purchased the, the current iMac? It's an efficient machine, but then it still has that chin, that old design. How would you feel when the 24 inch comes out? And then even in the following year, maybe 2022, and the the 27 inch or whatever may like maybe even a larger display comes out how does that make you feel i mean it's really just something to think about like not just the efficiency of the intel imac that is is like what we have right now but will you have regrets will you have buyer's remorse let's actually have that lead us into price so what I can tell you right now, just using the M1s as a benchmark, folks, I, let me just say it right here and right now. When you look at the base model of the Mac Mini at 699 US, and I've, I've said to you, think about your RAM, because if you are looking for a machine that is gonna serve you for the next several years, your RAM is important. And I've even, I even saw videos of people who said that they did get the RAM, but they, they didn't get the upgraded internal drive, but they kind of wish they did. I know that I've done several videos on working on external SSDs, and that is totally fine. But with the RAM, that is something that I think is really important if you're gonna hold on to this machine for a while. So looking at these machines, even my spec'd out machine, and it's not fully spec'd out, but at 1299 US, when you compare that to a machine that I was looking at, a 16 inch, a machine that was spec'd out and at 38.99 US, I believe it was, and it that that M1 is the a third of the price, less than a third of the price. Well, here throw in Apple Care, and it's at about a third of the cost. And as far as the performance is concerned, I'm getting fairly close to, and maybe even like better performance in in some tasks, in some tasks. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're thinking about putting together your machine and you're building out your machine, an extra $200 can really go a long way as far as longevity is concerned. Listen, I've talked about it. I'm here on YouTube, I have businesses, I put these machines to work in my business, I use them as depreciable assets, so I'm a businessman. So it's 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 not throwaway tech for me, it, but I do, like when it comes to the next iteration, will I be here with those? Yes, I will be because that's part of my business. I've admitted that in another video. So I'm just telling you, for those of you that are thinking about this is your investment, your hard earned dollars, your hard earned, the investment that you're making, just make these decisions with that in mind, thinking like, I know this is what I need right now, but potentially I could need a little bit more. And RAM has always been the, the piece that has seemed to suffer with updates. So just saying. Now I do think that the way uh, that the RAM works is that the, the current 16 gigs acts more like 32. And so on the next chips, are we thinking that the 32 is really going to be 64? And this is where we do get into the law of diminishing returns. And I think where you are gonna be at a crossroads here, if you wait, if you wait and you don't need to wait or you shouldn't wait on the M1, and we get here into the second half of 2021 or toward the end, the M1 is still gonna be available as the base option, as the entry point, because Apple does not wanna forget the folks uh, that, that are interested in the ecosystem. It's like the iPhone SC2. And of course, that's a whole nother video, but it gets people into the ecosystem. So you're gonna be at a crossroads thinking like, well, wait, so I can still get the M1, but it's, it's you know six months further down the road and it's six months older, I could then get the newer chip, but you're gonna pay for that newer chip. I think that the 14 inch is gonna come in at the, the higher end of what the, the 13 inch is. So I think we're looking at roughly about 1800 US as just a starting point. And the same thing with the 16 inch. I think we probably are gonna start maybe at around $2,400. And I think for those of you thinking like, yes, but it's Apple's architecture, why wouldn't it be less expensive? because they have to put that money back into R&D and not to mention the fact that they're going to put it into features. 
like the mini LED screen, the better you know efficiency as far as the power consumption is concerned. They're gonna put MagSafe back in these. Um, they're going to offer features that seem magical to people. And again, the marketing that they do. So I really don't think that these next machines are going to be cheaper. And especially like when you look at the M1, they're going, it's, it's gonna make you think because you're thinking like, well, if I have the M1 and then I throw another $200 just to upgrade to 16 gigs of, of RAM, but then why don't I go ahead and get the, the 14 inch that starts at 16 gigs at, at 1800. And so that's only like a couple hundred dollars difference. But you know what, now that I, I, I'm getting the upgraded chip like the M1X or the M2, then I probably got to upgrade the, that hard drive. And you know what, if I'm getting 16, maybe I should just go ahead and get 32. And then you're already like $800,000 or more that you have tried to allocate to this machine and your wallet's probably crying a little bit. So these are the things that you're gonna be thinking about that at that time. And it might make you feel a little uncomfortable, but you know what I'm talking about. You've tried to spec these things out and you've said, well, you know, just another 200. Well, maybe just another 400. I think that's really what's gonna happen because M1 is still gonna be here and these updated chips are gonna be here and folks are really gonna have a tough time. So that's just kind of where I think things are gonna land. And of course, lastly, on the price aspect, if you have a current 16 inch MacBook Pro or something within the last couple of years and you're thinking about, oh, resale value, Here's what I can tell you folks. I've got some creator friends that we're hanging out on Twitter and many of them are telling me, see MacBooks, like, like a MacBook Pro, you could buy it, use it for like a year. It's kind of like dating technology and you could sell it up. That sounds like, that sounds terrible. But you know, you could, you could reinvest that back into another machine and maybe only lose, let's say two to $400 uh, US on that. Whereas, well, I mean, maybe just $200 US in, in some cases. And I've seen some of my creator friends who have paid upwards of, you know, 3000 plus for a 16 inch that are now having to take maybe in, in, in like the low to potentially mid two thousands, like, like even like low two thousands, and they're still having a hard time getting that. So again, if you're thinking about trade in, if you're thinking about sort of that future, that's also, also something to think about. If you're trying to leverage that equity that you may have in your current Intel machine, because that, I mean, that's what's, that's just what's gonna happen. And as I said on the video that was very similar to this one, don't spend too much time in the rabbit holes trying to make these decisions, start coming up out of the surface and just trying to embrace and be okay with the decisions that you're making. Hit me up in the comment section below, hang out with me over there on Twitter. I really appreciate your time and attention on this one. You go do those things and I'll catch you right back here on the next one. Mm -hmm.